It's your boy Carcino here. Hey, let's look at the photo that's causing all the noise. Jerry was just standing there. Look, he's curious. He's curious right there in the photo when they snapped it. But it looked like he's trying to make his way to the front. This guy's just standing there too. So is this guy. Now, if Jerry was probably that guy, they'd be like, well, that guy was just standing there. He's looking at nothing. Jerry looked like he's all gang gang. Him and his homeboy, Buzz. Yo, Buzz, you see the action? We got to get in there. All because two kids want to go to school. They ain't trying to be their friend. These are just some kids that just want to go to school and learn. And look what they had to go through. And you want to compare that to what you have to go through today? Not the same, bro. It's not the same. They endured so that we would have a better life and a better opportunity to do something. And we're squandering it. Then we got people like Michael Irvin, Dak Prescott. Now I got to address them. Here we go. Poor Dak Prescott. The man was put in a very compromising situation that he shouldn't have been in. He's shaking like a leaf. He don't want to insult Jerry. He don't want to go against LeBron. He cool with everybody. And then the media sticks a microphone in his face and expect him to have the answer. This man was shaking like a dog on crack game. He was shaking like a crap game, baby. He was in a bad spot. The media had to help him with words. This is how bad it was for him. Now, during one of his practices, getting ready for the game last week, he was trying to say, oh, well, Jerry, that's not the Jerry that he's seen, and he's not like that today. Well... It'll remind you, Dak, that's the same man that didn't want to pay you. Jerry Jones did not want to pay Dak Prescott, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, Dak Prescott was not to be their starting quarterback. They never drafted him to be the future of the Dallas Cowboys. Nope. They wanted you to be the backup and you were the PR piece so that they could say the Dallas Cowboys ain't bigoted and we gave black quarterbacks a chance. That's what you were for. But Tony Hunt, Romo got hurt and in comes, you know who, Dak Prescott. And Dak start winning games. And then it was, uh-oh, what did we do now? Again, they wanted to not give this man a contract to be the main star of the team. Getting what he had earned and deserved. He worked on his game. He evolved as a passer. Wasn't just a runner anymore. Still, they didn't believe in him. They wanted anybody else to be the quarterback. But not you. Hmm, ain't that something? They would take Kirk Cousins over Dak Prescott. Why? You right back in the same boat. You got a quarterback that ain't going to win you anything. So why would you take a quarterback and Kirk Cousins when you could have Dak Prescott, who's younger, and gives you basically the same amount of chance as Kirk? And you're going to be paying the same kind of money because Kirk is getting a bag. Just pay the man. But them won the franchise tag, still messing around because there was the possibility that Dak could leave. And they didn't want that. So, on that note, we cue the music. 
Dak, you saw firsthand. He didn't want to pay you. He had to pay you. And look at that. One game into the season, you get hurt. The whole town is screaming for Cooper Rush. Already grooming your replacement. And then you come back. Now you lighten it up. Now they act like they don't know. They don't remember Cooper Rush. <laughs> but you got to ride for the skipper. Not your fault. Because like you said, that's the question for Jerry. Jerry need to be talking, not you. And of course, Michael Irvin has to follow his compadre, Stephen A. Because Lord for old, he going to mess up that bag. Michael Irvin, a man who screwed up his career by partying all the time, the playmaker. To the point where the playmaker was going to jail, getting busted for all kind of crimes. Every time he got in trouble, Jerry was there to clean him up. You know, prostitution, cocaine, whatever, the violence, stabbing an offensive lineman in the neck with a pair of shears at a barber shop. No charges. Jerry made all that happen. So, of course, Michael Irvin comes out. Oh, those pictures are old. We talking about old stuff. He never did nothing like that to me. Because you play for him. You work for him. So, of course, you got to go out there and fight for Massa. That's what you better do. woo -hoo! We got a rope. And dancing. You think Jerry cares about you? He got you there for this reason. They interviewing you. They interviewing Dak. They interview anybody that played for the Cowboys. Why? It's Jerry's decision. It's Jerry's turn to speak. Not y'all. What y'all talking for? Y'all ain't supposed to be opening y'all damn mouth. But yet, y'all want to talk, and your main defense is that that was 1957. As if Jerry has shown you since 1957, he has been a whole new guy. I've never looked at Jerry Jones and said, man, that dude shows me he really gives a damn about the black community. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So you know what I did, fellas? I did my homework. And now you guys are going to learn. Now hit the like button for this, please. And don't forget to send your questions to the Cash App. You got the Cash App questions. We will be reading those and getting those off. So we have some very good ones show up in the Cash App. So we definitely answer some of those. And we'll get to that in a second. I want you to make sure that you subscribe to the page. Hit that notification bell. Now listen to this. That is the Gene and Jerry Jones Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is their charity foundation for Jerry Jones family. Let's see what Gene and Jerry Jones Family Foundation is about. They donate millions to the Salvation Army as this foundation has done tremendous work for the military and the Salvation Army and of course they have their youth programs and their outreach programs they have a parents clinic on display they have youth activities for the Dallas Cowboys Youth Team, Football Academy, and the Dance Academy. 
They also has the the Play 60. They have um, Dallas Cowboy University. Then they have their outreach programs. Now let's see the outreach programs. Character education, the character playbook. Then they have the military outreach. Red, white, and blue. Got to do that in Dallas. And they have women's health. That's where their money go to. And Hispanic outreach. That is the four outreaches that this program has. So Jerry Jones Foundation and what he donates to is women health, Hispanic reach, military outreach, and character education. That is the Jerry Jones Outreach Foundation. Now, what don't you see on this list? How many Hispanics do you think is on the Dallas Cowboy football team? 0 0.0000000.1 percent. But the Hispanic outreach program is what Jerry Jones is donating his money to. When 77.8% of your players is African American. Not one dime is going to the brothers. But the Hispanic outreach they get all the bread. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't see Jerry to be in the same as 1957. <laughs> He'd have never gave money to a Mexican in 57. <laughs> He's changed. <laughs> she was 25 more years. He might give us some money. <laughs> oh, my God. Boy, I tell you. Jeez, 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 man. It's... It's it's not it's funny, but it ain't funny. It's sad. It's pathetic. It shows you how weak these people really are because this comes along with their territory now. This is why I can't be subservient to another man. You know, I can't have somebody have their foot on my neck and I gotta be there to yeah and tap dance for them. No, they they gonna be tapping dancing for themselves. Yeah, it's sad. It's really sad. Because everybody could tell Jerry Jones don't have no care, no concern from 1957 to now. And quit telling me what time it was back then. Well, back then, back then, it's still the same as now. He ain't changed one bit. He's still Jerry. Jerry still got... No black coaches, no black general manager, nobody in that front office. Where has he exhibited anything to show that he's there for African Americans? Hmm? Same man that told you, without even caring about the issues of talking to the players at all, he just made a decision. The Cowboys, we stand. Because your charity donate to the military, which is nothing wrong with that. But I think it's very inconsiderate for you not to think or care about what the players who earn you that damn money. What they sitting over there every night killing themselves for playing the game they love. And you hire them because they're the best players. Hell, the first Mexican-born player, you just did a whole uh, NFL, what they do that, that camp, training camp that they do. Them NFL videos of the Dallas Cowboys, they had the first guy from Mexico to try to come on the team. They did damn near a whole special on him. And he didn't even make the team. Some offensive lineman. 
So it shows that you care more about the Hispanics than the players that's actually playing on your damn team. Why is that? Because you in Texas. Oh, I get it. Because you in Texas. And they're everywhere. Because Texas is nothing but Mexico. So, yes, we will donate stuff for the Hispanics. But forget the brothers that play actually on the team. So, when you tell me Jerry Jones is not like that today, what do you mean? How do you prove it? Prove it by what? What has he done? So everybody said we can't go by the picture. I ain't going by the picture. I'm going by his track record. The pitcher just said, well, it all makes sense. <laughs> Did you need that photo of Jerry Jones to show you? Does Jerry Jones show you of a man that you think really cares? Our problem is this. We sitting around focusing on who cares about us and who don't. I don't care if Jerry Jones is a racist or not. That's Jerry Jones' problem, not mine. But the thing is that makes it alarming is that that man is in charge and an owner of an organization where 77.8% of the players on that field is African-American of color. So him being a person that has to hire people, yeah, it does matter if that guy is a racist or not. Because he could be making decisions based on his own personal beliefs of race, prejudiceness, or whatever, color and creed. So, yeah, it does matter what he thinks to the main world. But do I care about what he thinks? No, I don't want to ever play for the Dallas Cowboys and don't think I will. But I don't want to play in the NFL, period. But there are people that want that dream. And they're going to want to have the opportunity of fairness to be determined by how I play on the field, not whether or not I might be a certain color or whatever. And Jerry seems to have shown from his track record, he has no problem with anybody black playing for the Dallas Cowboys if you could play. Now, he might not want to pay you a certain price that he would pay a white man. But he definitely won't like you on his team. But what about the front office? Oh, no, 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 no. Front office now. No, I thought you meant just playing on the field. <laughs> you think Jerry Jones wanted to hire a black coach? I wouldn't even fill out the application <laughs> for the Dallas Cowboys first black coach. No, 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 no. <laughs> He gonna be, where's my equipment? Well, you the coach. He'll be like, hell, man, look. It's a crazy world out here. We know that, y'all all know that. World's insane. But one thing remains the same. These tropes remain in place. And unfortunately, a lot of these people are in positions of power. So, yeah, that being called out on blast, there's a reason why that picture was submerged and kept down. Because they knew the type of damage this would do to Jerry. Now you think people are making a big fuss over it now. I don't need that photo to know about Jerry. I can't believe anybody would look at Jerry and see him as a man of that cares about equal opportunity. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But this is why you try to put yourself in a position to where you don't need a Jerry or need anybody in that sort. But if you somebody, not everybody is preparing their life for non-sports. And that's why I try to tell, if, you know, if I have children, I'm never directing them towards sports. I'm like, no. Mm -mm. You could play it because you love the game. 
but not professionally. I won't allow it. But it'll be your choice. But you're going to be well educated. You're going to get. You're going to have the jobs to where you're going to create your own jobs. You're going to be able to have the tools to be needful, not replaceable. You're going to possess those tools, that education, that knowledge, because. I was limited by the technology of my time. Had I had all these opportunities, I wouldn't have wasted them. If I had this a little bit earlier, I had the vision, not the tools, to get it done. Now that the tools are in place, now I wish I had the time. So now anybody coming up prior, they have to have that fire. They have to have that desire. I know how to get it there. But we have to stop this pampering of people owe us. They owe us recreation. So what you going to do? Sit around and wait? Why they do? Or you going to get off your hump and start trying to earn it? Go out there and get yours until they will do or whatever. But you trying to wait for the oppressors to give you something. It's like, where they do that at? So that's where I'm at with it right now. I'm just letting y'all know that's where I stand. So we just had to address these fools who keep bouncing around doing what they doing. I don't really blame Dakota. Dak was doing exactly what Dak is paid to do. They got him to speak on it when he really shouldn't because he's the captain of the Cowboys. So now he's got to speak on it. And he looked really uncomfortable. But old chap lip over there. Michael Irvin. I don't need no Carmex. Don't you bring that Carmex over here. I don't need that. That dude is the playmaker. He just stuck in time. But he know Jerry Jones then saved my life. And they keep the playmaker out there like the playmaker is that guy. He's good for a good rav you up speech. But the playmaker is the excuse maker. Jerry came and gave him a job working for the Cowboys, being the face of the Cowboys. So that means anything Jerry need done, he call up Michael Irvin. And Michael's going to deliver. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Without any more words being said, I want to say thank you guys for that. Now let's get to the Cash App questions. Uh, cash App question once is, will you, I think I did that podcast thing with Kwame Brown. I think I've answered that one already. But that's on Kwame Brown and I don't know anything about it. I haven't been setting up. We haven't talked about doing anything like that. But, um, uh, sure, I, I would be bound down. I, we both would have time, got to find time to do something like that. Did I see Gilbert Arenas in the bathtub? 
and he's trying to do anything for attention. Um, no, I did not see Gilbert Arenas in a bathtub, and I don't think I want to see Gilbert Arenas in a bathtub. So whatever he's doing, he's not getting the hits and views. He probably thought he was worth. I did see that uh, Gilbert got some type of, they did something in Washington, like they was honoring the big three. I've never known there was a big three for losing, but I guess <laughs> they have a losing big three now. And they're like, they're welcoming Gilbert back into the circle. We're going to get you back in good graces. We're going to forget about the gun. Forget about the gun. It's old. There's water under the bridge now. We're going to welcome you home. Um, let me see. What other question they had on there? Uh, thank you for the Bill Cosby interview. Uh, like Shannon Sharp, his um, club Shay Shay more than I like uh, Undisputed. Speak oh, Club Shay Shay, uh, Shannon Sharp thing? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I like it better uh, because it's more of an interview, you know, than just them debating. So I think that was the smartest thing Shannon Sharp has done was to do that on the side. It made Skip try to do his own thing too. You know, but Skip is just, he doesn't really want to interview anybody. He just wants to talk. So when Skip does it, he normally is going after somebody. I haven't seen him do it in a while, but I knew Skip. Skip's not made for the internet, <laughs> period. The former journalist, he's just not really designed for that. Uh, thanks for the super chat. I mean, well, not the super chat, the cash app. My cash app is Carcino, K-A-R-C-E-N-O. Who do I think is the best black quarterback of all time? I would say probably Warren Moon. Warren Moon to me was was better than Randall Cunningham. And That's, I'm trying to think of who would be number two. I would say Steve McNair is up there. A lot of people don't give Steve McNair the credit he truly deserves. But Steve McNair, I would put him on that list. Uh, rest in peace to Steve McNair. Man. Doug. Doug, Doug didn't have a... Great career. He played at outstanding that season for Washington. And he really showed out in the Super Bowl and made some incredible throws. But injuries ruined Doug's uh, career. He was uh, what really could have been had he been healthy. Uh, Michael Vick was the first to really elevate the RPO to a, a deadly weapon on the field that changed offenses in college and everything. Everybody started doing RPOs. Is Anthony Davis uh, MVP? Uh, right now, do you think Anthony Davis is leading in the NBA race? Uh, that's an outstanding cash app. Thank you. And no, I do not think Anthony Davis is the most valuable player. Uh, Anthony Davis is playing better than he did last year. He's playing up to that level, but he really hasn't played any competition really at his position. They was like, oh, he battled Giannis. No, it was really Giannis versus him and LeBron and everybody else. And he ain't really stopped Giannis. At all. So, yeah, he got his points because nobody, you know, everybody's worried about other people. 
Now, tonight, he ran into a situation. So we'll find out more about Anthony Davis. So, well, you'll see. I'm betting on he's going to be the same Anthony Davis I've always seen in my day. <laughs> day and time. Oh, on the Patreon, what we got coming up? We got uh, the Nas. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing about Nas. We finna get into that. That might be Patreon only. I haven't decided yet. Absolutely. True that. That's right. One love. I'm out.